The Dixon Gallery and Gardens is an art museum here in Memphis, Tennessee. We have artwork that travels from all over the world to be shown in our gallery spaces, and the artwork is always changing, so there's always something new to see. We also have a beautiful garden outside filled with all different types of plants, flowers, and trees. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen. And I'm Danielle. We work for the Dixon Gallery and Gardens, and our job is to teach people about the museum and the gardens outside. So today we'd like to create an art project for you inspired by the gardens at the Dixon. Let's get started. Come on. The Dixon's garden is very beautiful, and the flowers and plants you can find there change throughout the year. We have lots of employees that work hard at planting and watering our gardens so they stay looking beautiful. But the people aren't the only ones who can take credit for the beauty of our gardens. We rely on lots of other living things to help out too. Insects do a lot of work at helping our flowers grow and helping our soil stay fertile. Let's learn about a few insects who are really helpful in the garden. Earthworms are very helpful in a garden because they transport nutrients and minerals from below the earth to above ground through their movement and waste. Ladybugs help gardens by eating a smaller insect called aphids that can destroy plants and flowers. Ladybugs can eat hundreds of aphids a day and thousands in its lifetime. Bees and butterflies are both very important in a garden because they are pollinators. That means they collect pollen with their body and carry it to other flowers as they fly to feed on the sweet nectar that's inside. When this happens, it helps flowers and plants produce new seeds. A praying mantis is another great insect to have in the garden. They are excellent predators and can camouflage themselves against grass and leaves. They have a huge appetite and will eat almost any insect that is causing problems in the garden. These are just a few of the insects you might find at the Dixon, but our gardens are packed full of living things. You can find tons of insects, spiders, and animals like birds, squirrels, foxes, and bunnies. Let's read a book together inspired by all the things you might find hiding in a garden. This book is called In the Tall, Tall Grass, and it's written and illustrated by Denise Fleming. In the Tall, Tall Grass Crunch, munch, caterpillars lunch Dart, dip, hummingbird sip Strum, drum, bees hum Crack, snap, wings flap Pull, tug, ants lug. Slip, slide, snakes glide. Rich, ratch, moles scratch. Skitter, scurry, beetles hurry. Zip, zap, tongue snap. Hip, hop, ears flop. Stop, go, fireflies glow. Lunge, loop, Bats swoop, stars bright, moonlight, good night, tall, tall grass. Now that we've looked at some of the insects living in the gardens at the Dixon, and we've read a book to inspire us, let's make our own collage of tall, tall grass with lots of insects hiding inside. Following the lines on the bottom of our paper, we're going to carefully cut along the line, but when the line stops, we need to stop too. Don't cut all the way to the top, just cut to the end of your line. The lines are kind of like a road, and so we want to follow the road with our scissors, which is kind of like our car. So my road is straight, and I need to keep my scissors going straight up and down. Cut all of your lines, and then we're ready for the next step. We're going to fold our green paper in half. When you flip your paper over, you can see that all your blades of grass are still there. Make sure to turn your green paper over so that all the blades of grass are underneath and you can't see any spaces where we've cut. Using a glue stick, we're going to add some glue to the back of our green paper. Put it all over the edges and a little in the middle too. 
Now we're going to flip over our green paper and glue it to the bottom of our blue paper. Make sure that the folded side of our green paper is touching the bottom of our blue paper. That way all of our blades of grass can open up at the top. Now we can add some things in our sky, like clouds or a sun. You might even draw a bird or some butterflies. I'm going to use crayons, sketch out my clouds, and color them in. Let's add a sun too. Finally, we are ready for our insects that are hiding in the tall, tall grass. Open your paper up so that all your grass is laying at the bottom. And you can practice putting your insect stickers however you like hiding in your grass. Make sure that you don't stick them down until you know exactly where you want them. When you're ready, carefully pull the paper off the back so that it's sticky on the other side, and then stick it to the green paper. Repeat this step for all your other stickers. Fold your grass up to hide all of your insect stickers, and now they can get to their busy work of pollinating, moving minerals, and eating garden pests. We're all done. Great job. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll visit the Dixon soon, and as always, stay creative.